Hello and welcome to Danny's Tips. The tone curve adjustment is a seriously powerful tool that lets you create a lot of different photo effects, but it's also very hard to use. In this tutorial, you will learn my secret trick to using the tone curves, which makes it easier to use and it will give you better results at the same time. I've used this technique to create hundreds of Photoshop actions and Lightroom presets, and if you've ever used any of my products, you'll know how much I depend on it to keep things minimal and less CPU intensive. Today, I'll reveal to you my secret trick, the tone chart. Let's start by seeing how this technique works. So here we have the tone curves adjustment. The tone curve is in my opinion the most important and useful adjustment that every photographer needs to know. You can create nearly any photo effect with just this one layer. And it's a universal skill that you can use in other software, such as Lightroom, Capture One, Adobe Premiere, After Effects, and even a lot of Android and iOS photo editing apps. But the problem with the tone curve is that it's not intuitive at all. A lot of people don't know how to use it, and for the people who do, most of them only know a couple tone curve shapes, but they don't actually understand what's happening, or why certain shapes are creating certain effects. So instead of guessing your way around the tone curve, let me introduce you to this trick, the tone chart. Using the tone chart, you can change the tones in your photo simply by targeting specific tonal areas on your chart like this. It makes adjusting the tone curves a lot easier, and it lets you see exactly what's happening. The true power of the tone chart comes when you're using the red, green, and blue channel in the tone curve. Anyone who has used the RGB tone curve will remember that when they first try to use it, how everything just doesn't really seem to make sense. They're creating things and it all seems very random. But now you have this tone chart, you can see exactly what colors are getting and where the color is appearing in your photo. So now that you know how this works, let's learn how to create the chart. Instead of creating a bunch of rectangles, we're going to do something better and we're going to just add a black to white gradient. Go to the toolbar and select the rectangular marquee tool. Drag to create a rectangular selection like this. You don't need to make it as high as mine, but for this tutorial, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so that it's easier for you to see. Now we need to add the gradient fill layer. You won't find this in the adjustment panel because it's technically not an adjustment layer. It's actually a fill layer. You can find it in your layers panel by clicking on this new fill or adjustment layer button, and on the top, you'll find the gradient fill layer. By the way, don't confuse this with the gradient map. Those are two completely different things. So make sure that you're adding a gradient fill layer and not a gradient map adjustment layer. In the preset picker, select the black to white gradient, change the angle to zero, click OK, and you'll get a horizontal gradient like this. Next, add a posterized adjustment layer. You can find this in the same menu that we used earlier in the layers panel, or you can select it in the adjustment panel. If you don't see this panel, you can find it by going to Window, Adjustments. With this adjustment, you can limit your image to a number of tonal areas. For example, if we set this to 3, we'll get black, gray, and white. If we set it to 5, we'll have blacks, shadows, midtones, highlights, and whites. You can increase this even more if you want to, but I generally like to start off at around 5 or 7. Also, you want to keep this number an odd number, and the reason for that is so that you always have a 50% gray color in your chart. Right now, the posterized adjustment is affecting the entire image. To make it so it only affects the gradient, click on this button here. This basically clips the adjustment to a layer below it. We're done creating the gradient, so now let's move on to the tone curve. In your adjustments panel, click on the curves adjustment. Note that there are four channels in this tone curve, the RGB channel, red, green, and blue. To show you what it's doing, let me drag the channels panel out like this. Basically, the channels in this tone curve targets the channel in your image. So the red channel in the tone curve will affect the red channel in your photo. Same with the green and blues. For the RGB channel, it's actually affecting all three channels at once. If you don't know how channels affect your image, then click on this video to learn more about channel contrast. It's something that everyone who uses the tone curve needs to know. We're done with the layer setup. Now it's time to play with the tone curves. Let's start with the RGB channel. Click on this button here to use the Auto Select Targeted Adjustment Tool. This is a long name, but it's pretty simple. And what this tool lets you do is it lets you create and change points on your tone curve simply by dragging the tonal area that you want to adjust like this. Drag vertically to change the settings. 
as you do this, you'll see the changes being made live in your tone curves panel. This is a great way to learn and understand how the tone curve works. When you're done, you can switch to a red, green, and blue channel. Select any one of these channels, then try dragging on the middle of the chart to see what colors you can get. For example, if we go to the red channel and drag this upward like this, we'll tint the image red. If we drag it down, we'll tint it the opposite color, which is teal. Keep playing with these settings until you get something that you like. So there you have it, you now know how to create effects using the tone curve. The tone chart makes using the tone curve way easier, and it gives you a visualization of the effect that you're creating. But there's another benefit, and this is more for advanced users. If you look at the tone curve, you'll notice that the horizontal position of your points, they're all evenly spaced out. You can even go into different channels, and the horizontal position will match each other. This is important once you start getting into more advanced tone curve techniques. But those are for another video. To end this tutorial, let me show you some examples of effects I created using this technique. Hey guys, thanks for checking out my video. I hope you liked it. Now there's so much more you can do with the tone chart. You can replicate effects, like if you saw a photo online and you liked the way that the photographer processed it, you can use this technique to replicate their effects with very accurate results. Other things you can do is you can compress your layers down. So if you made a photo effect with 5 or 10 layers, you can compress it down into a single tone curves adjustment using this technique. Uh, you can also do this in Lightroom. But I'll be teaching you guys more about tone curves and the tone charts in future videos. So if you're interested, make sure you hit the subscribe button below. Anyways, thanks for watching guys. I hope you have an awesome week. And make sure you click the like button if you liked the video. And let me know what you think in the comments.